Hello and welcome back to our virus uh, scanning demonstrations here. In the previous video that I made in this series, we had a virus that was able to infect other files. And so you can see on the screen the results of that program. So this is a virus that is able to copy itself into other Python scripts. So it's not a real virus, it doesn't affect uh, any of the executable programs on your computer, but it does affect other Python files. I'll give you a quick demonstration just to see what it does and then we'll create a virus scanner. So this thing here just ran, and as you can see from our programs here, hello, used to just have a single line of text in it. So let's disinfect this one file here. I'm just going to highlight all this code that was inserted and go back to our original Hello World app. Now the next goal that I'm going to do is create two separate programs that will scan for viruses and alert the user that they're infected. First of all, we'll use what's called a virus signature program. This is simple. All it does is it looks for the pattern of the virus in the program, and if it finds it, it alerts the person. The second is a heuristic kind of a check. It will see if the file size and the file date of the program has changed, which is also a great way to identify a virus has infected you. So we'll probably save that one for the next video. In this video, we're going to create the virus signature scanner. So just out of curiosity, I went to find what Symantec has for their signatures. As you might guess, they have a lot of them. And so if I were to browse through here, it says they have 1,094 of signatures. And you can see that every virus that's been discovered, or been created, I might say, has a name to it, and there's different version numbers. And the goal of Symantec in one of their scans is to look for any of these patterns. So if we were to find a kill and look at its code, you would see that there would be a, a signature to it. There would be unique code that is in this program that is not in any other programs. And so they just simply scan all executables and DLLs and to see if there's any sign of that code. So that's what we're going to do in this video is create signature scanners. So in this example, I have an uninfected file, hello, and an infected file, hello again. And when we run our scanner, it should tell us that one of these is clean and the other one is clear. So I'm going to go into idle and create a new file and start with my virus scanner. So in the first part of my program, I'm going to create a scan the signature kind of a program. So just like a Symantec or other programs, we'll search all files and look for specific types of code. So I'm going to create a function called check for signatures. And the first thing I'll do is print to the screen what I'm doing. So when I create my report, I will have a beginning and an ending line for telling what's going on. So the first thing I want to do is check for every Python file in this folder. And so I'm going to use the globe library again and look for the pattern match that's star.py. So since we're using glob or globe, I'm going to import it up near the top of the program. So after I get a list of programs, I'm going to loop through each one of them. So I'll use a for loop using p as the counter variable and then we'll initially set the value of this file is infected, we'll set it to false until we find the signature. In the next three lines, we will open the file, and we will open it with read-only access, and then we will save all the contents into a list called lines, and then finally we get to close the program. So now we'll go through each line in the file, and we'll say for a loop, line in lines. And then if we find a signature in one of the lines, then we know we have found a virus. So since we're using the regular expression library here, we will also import that near the top. So we will put import re. Now the signature that I'm looking for is a specific item in my virus that I know should be there if it's infected. Well, let's go back to the part of the code here. So we could probably select a, a block of code that would be somewhat, you know, unique to the program. Just for ease of use, we know that the line here called end of virus or the line called starting virus code is unique to this program. So I'm going to copy that and use that as my signature. So if this appears anywhere in the program, then we can assume that the file is infected. So if we do find a virus signature, we will print out a large warning that says virus found in file P. And then we will set the boolean of the this file is infected to be true. After the for loop is finished, we can check to see if this file infected is still false. 
So if it never got changed to true, then it appears that this file is clean, and so we will print a nice message to the user telling them that that file is clear. Now after the program is completed, we need to actually call the function. So at the very bottom, I'm going to call the function we made called check for signatures. So I'm going to save this and make sure that I'm in the, still in the same directory, and we'll call it virus scan. How about? Okay, so now this should be able to tell us about all of the other files in the folder. Let's see what happens when I run it. So I run the module. Uh oh, we have an in, a syntax problem. What did I do wrong? Uh, let's see, it looks like I forgot an extra parenthesis, so you'll probably end up doing some of the same things that I am, checking for your typos. Okay, this time we have a report. Okay, so let's compare the report to what we know is to be true. So, hello py appears to be clean, and if we look at this, it looks pretty clear. I've only got one line of text. It says, uh, hello again is infected, Python virus obviously is infected, and it scanned itself, and it said virus scan appears to be clean. So this is the, uh, this is the virus pattern matching method. So in the next video, we'll use a more common method called the heuristics method to check to see if file size changes and uh, date stamps have also been changed. So another common tool that will help you understand how virus scanners work. Now, had this been a real virus scanning program, we would have to search for far more than just one line of text. We would probably have to create a library of thousands of signatures and check each one of them against each file. And so the virus scanning process on your computer likely takes several minutes because there's a lot of pattern matching going on. But in this case, it's a single line of text and it demonstrates the basic idea of how to scan for a virus signature. See you in the next video where we'll create a heuristic scan program.